Choices, choices, everywhere choices. And now in real estate, even more choices. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. We're excited that we've created for you free access to over 603 Life's Inside Track episodes where we share insider tips, making house home, how to get the most out of your space. And the great news is you get access or you can get access to them from home, from the office or on the go. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, you know what I'm going to say. Subscribe to the Decorate Team YouTube channel so you can get access as soon as they come out. We're going to explore in this segment designated agency, which is probably not something you've thought about or heard about or even pondered, but in the real estate world, as we've talked about, things are changing. Relationships are, are shifting as of mm-hmm. December 1st. Yeah, phase two of the Trust in Real Estate Act, which we fondly call TRESA, Trust in Real Estate Act 2002. Phase two is rolling out December 1st. And what does it mean? Well, in the past, we only had agency as far as the brokerage went. And agency, what we're talking about is your relationship, even though you might work with Ken Decker when he was helping you buy, sell, or invest in real estate, you technically were a client of Solid Rock Realty, Mm -hmm. right? So your real estate agent is an independent contractor that's connected to a brokerage. And the legal relationship that you had, the only option was that it was connected to the brokerage. Right. If you signed a buyer representation or a listing agreement to sell your house, which it was actually with the brokerage. Right, which is a seller representation. Right. Listing Mm -hmm. documents is the same as a seller being represented to sell real Mm -hmm. estate. So it's like hiring a lawyer. That lawyer has fiduciary responsibilities to you. And fiduciary basically means I have to treat you like you are me. I'm an extension of you, and I have to protect you the same way I would protect myself. Okay, is that is that clear? That's clear, but you don't need to tell me. You need to tell. <laughs> all right. Now, all of that's changing a little bit. So what would happen is, let's say you signed up with Yetta Decker to buy a house, and then the house you loved was also listed with Solid Rock Realty, it might be with Yetta or maybe a different agent in our brokerage. It was called multiple representation because the brokerage was representing two parties, okay, and we act more like a mediator. But it took away some of the things that we could do. We couldn't negotiate. We couldn't counsel. We just said, here's what the buyer's offer is. What would you like to do? And and we couldn't say, hey, maybe you want to change the price by 5000 or whatever, we would just say, what would you like to do? Would you like to accept it, counter it, or reject it? That's the only options we could give you. And we couldn't really represent you fully, fully, fully. In the case. Of multiple representation. Right. And multiple representation would only exist and only existed, well, it exists a couple different ways, but if the brokerage was representing more than one party in that particular sale Mm -hmm. on that particular property. And if a buyer chose customer service, then we only represented the seller. So it wasn't multiple rep. Right. So if Mm -hmm. you didn't fully understand that piece, you're going to want to re-listen to segment A, where we unpack and narrow down a little bit more on what's a customer versus a client. Okay. Client, basically, we owe you fiduciary responsibility. Customer, we just owed you really our code of ethics, meaning being reputable. Mm -hmm. So here's where Tressa 2002 really changes, Mm -hmm. is they've added designated agency, which is kind of interesting. It means that, let's say you want Yetta to represent you. You Yetta could be, okay, I'm going to be designated as your agent. And maybe Ken has the listing or another agent in our brokerage has the listing. That person could choose 
designated agency for them individually. For that seller. For that seller. So now the brokerage still has oversight to make sure that the transaction is done well, the deposit is deposited the way it should be, and that the agents act ethically and all that. But they're no longer the agent. It's the individual sales rep. The individual realtor is now the designated agency or agent, right? We always called us agents, but we weren't really. <laughs> no, it's just that's the language of the industry. So no wonder if you're confused right now, you are not alone. The reality, even realtors are confused about the changes that are taking place and even the way in which real estate is structured. So if you need some clarity, we'll give you, if you email us together at DeckerTeam.com, the new 12-page brochure or document, whatever you want to call it, that explains self-representation and we'll also provide you all the other amazing documents we have. And we'll answer your questions because we're doing our utmost right now to get rid of ambiguity, get rid of confusion, get rid of the chaos that whirls in your mind. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the questions so many of our clients are asking is, why does this matter? Like, who cares that the changes are happening in the real estate industry the way yeah. they are? <laughs> it's a good question. You won't care until it affects you. Right. When you're in the middle of a transaction and it affects you, that's when you need to understand it and you need to care. So multiple rep isn't disappearing. Multiple representation is not disappearing. It can still exist. But designated agency is being added. And for a buyer, why would you want designated agency? Because now that person, that, that individual realtor can 100% look after your interests. They can give you counsel on negotiating. They can make sure your interests are protected. Now, they still got to negotiate with the other agent. but you need On to, your behalf, On your though. behalf. So now you have that agent in your pocket, so to speak, that's protecting you. In your corner. In your corner. Thank you. That's a better thing yeah. in pool, in the corner, the pockets. No. And then as a seller... You still have somebody under designated agency who can represent your best interests, negotiate on your behalf, and counsel you 100%. Even when it's the same brokerage that's involved on both sides of the mm -hmm. transaction. So mm -hmm. it doesn't happen that often. It's probably less than 5% of the time that the seller and the buyer are both working with someone in the same company. Yeah. So this is not going to affect the vast majority of the times that you're buying and selling. It is for the minority, but it's in the minority of situations where people feel taken advantage of, right. where then, it feels ugly, where they don't know what's going on, where there's confusion mm -hmm. and there's no need for it. That's why it's trust in real estate. The changes are designed to make more trust in the real estate industry mm -hmm. for the sellers and the buyers, more transparency and more trust. Mm -hmm. Now, it makes a bigger difference yet. Yeah, if, if a brokerage has 500 real estate agents or a brokerage has three, the odds of having in the past multiple rep was much bigger with a mm -hmm. big brokerage than it was with a wee little brokerage, right? Yeah. So, oh. Yeah, Wessam Fazi, he said, the quality of life is built on the quality of your decisions. Together, we're clarifying your options because wisdom will flow for you. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team.